The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Fortunately, 
None of the scripture was lost. But whether these ideas, however silly or kind of ironic, they do tie into my reflection today. It is a bit of an extension on last week when I mentioned changing the people and the circumstances around you by your actions and how we can lead better lives. It was an extension of the coffee bean idea, that idea that a coffee bean, when placed in boiling water, changes the environment around it, makes coffee. And the key is how you respond to any situation is what's important. The fact that you do, but also how you respond. We see how in our first passage, it expresses that we should be upright and godly in our work, whether male or female, mother or father, to hold themselves in a moral center and to do those things that are active and loving within their community. As well, love their children and be joyful around them. While this image of the children calling their mother happy was a perfect double entendre that I couldn't even make up if I tried, it is fitting if what children see and experience is not only happiness, but guidance, good behavior, hard work, and all those good habits that are mentioned, that will carry over to them. They are all positive and should be desired and at least attempted to be followed. What's interesting is those same values could become burdens to children if the, effort, if the efforts that are being made are made with some sort of negativity or unhappiness. And unfortunately, in this world today, we see that far too much. A parent is doing all they can to care for their family, but the intention for the actions and the outcomes just don't line up. They're miserable at what they're doing, or they're frustrated by not being able to do more, and instead of finding that joy, what is reflected often is children feeling as though they are a burden and not a joy. Or that their parents may be feeling some responsibility, not love. Now, we can feel that way about our faith at different times. It's true, and we can get frustrated towards God about something that's going on in our world, but it's important for us to realize that each and every time and each and every day, that we are out in the world, we will be influencing others. And influencing others, including children, far more than we think. We have to do our best to try and show a loving, affirming, and uplifting way about us as we go about our work and our life. And when we do, our faith and not our duty is what rises up. People will start to notice it. They may not be able to name it. The other thing that I think is just as important, and I think is worth noting, before anyone feels too much pressure, is that on the days we can't, or simply days we face too many struggles to put on a happy face, or to act in a way that is perfect in some way or another, we have to risk something that I think at times can be even harder, which is being authentic and engage in those conversations about maybe not complaints, but the struggles that you might be facing. Now, you want to do it authentically and with love so others around you understand that everybody can have bad days. We know it in our heads. But sometimes it takes too long to travel down to our hearts. And just simply noting, this is a bad day for me, can make more of an impression than the days that are perfect and joyful. We have to be willing to share that. We also see in James this reference to why we do the things we do. We can't do them from a position of worldly desire, a 
position of ungodly actions, of envy, or from greed. Because they're coming from a negative place, a worldly place. And that won't produce faithful fruit. That is the kind of behavior I sort of referenced last week in the boiling water example. Where what happens to an egg when you put it in, in hot water, boiling water, eventually it hardens. There are times where people think, well, I just harden my heart and I get through this time. And I can figure out what to do next. There are times where you may gain some kind of short-term advantage to that hardness. But in the long run, we may not only be hurting ourselves, but impacting others around us without even knowing it. People we love and care for. And over time, trust can be lost. And there is less and less communal involvement. <laughs> because that hardening causes us to turn away from one another and turn inward and only worry about ourselves. Fortunately, what I have found here at St. Francis is that people pull together. And they pull together in the best possible ways. I'm witness to it, and I know you all know it, even if it's kind of stayed in the head and hadn't gotten to the heart quite yet. It's true. People know how time and time again you have all stepped up to show your faith in action and to be filled with positive energy for this community, this church itself, and the region around us. If we can take the teachings, the actions, and the power of God and use them as our God, continue to study God's Word, maybe not consume it like my dog did, and the actions of Jesus, we can find ways to be happy and to have that love spread not only within the walls of this place, but also with our local community and the people that we may meet or serve in different ministries. The other thing that James is quick to point out is that if we resist the negative, the evil, the evil, excuse me, of the world, the devil will flee. Simply put, there is far more low-hanging fruit out there than to worry with someone who is resisting. If we can turn towards God, lean on God, we can find a clear path closer to God. And it will show in the people around us and how people that we may interact with respond. They will see how that we are behaving. And truthfully, and it happens almost all the time, they're going to want to know how and why. What is it that's different? Why are you so positive? Why are you so faithful in a ministry or in service? But there's a rule here that we have to also remember, and it's very important to know. We cannot expect perfection. On this earth, we can try our best, but we know there was only one perfect human, and that was Jesus. Our goal should be to represent our faith and our life well. I like to say we should represent it with excellence, not perfection. Because we know that we're going to fall short. We know that there are going to be bad days. We know we're going to forget something along the way. But if we are doing our best to get engaged with ministry, with excellence, others will help us pick up the slack. Others will lean into their own faith. And as we know throughout the centuries, God extends a great deal of grace. And I am thankful for that, I can tell you. As God has throughout the centuries, God's grace is large enough for those slips. I believe that just like the little children, the disciples traveling with Jesus kind of got caught showing that they were slipping into the worldly thoughts and beliefs. But it's much like a child. Who's the best? Who's the most powerful? Who's the greatest among them? Doing things that kids do in play all the time. 
However, they knew better, but they did it anyway. And they allowed that worldly nature to creep in for a second. Jesus, to me, has a beautiful way of teaching us that, yes, while God is all-knowing and all-seeing, God's grace is enough to guide and direct all of us when we fall short. And then allow us to recover and to spread that love that we are called to spread throughout the world. All of us fall short sometimes, and even though in our best efforts we strive not to, we know that when we do, we can have that grace and hope, not only from God, but from also all of those around us, understanding that it may be your bad day and not mine. But who knows when my day's coming? Because it could happen. It will happen. I promise. As we get to know one another better, and as we move forward, we should do all those things that we can with the resources we have. But know that they're the resources we have. We have wonderful people here. And we should strive to seek God in all those things. <coughs> limiting whatever is frustrating or worldly among us. We know Jesus was the perfect model. So we must lay down the thought that we will be perfect in all we do. However, if our efforts and our energies are directed through the will of God, and our intention is excellence, and to be good and upright, following that model as best we can of Jesus Christ, using the examples of others in Scripture, our work can be amazing here, right here at St. Francis and this community. I pray that we can strive always to seek excellence, in all that we do, knowing full well that we leave all the perfection to the one who was perfect in Jesus Christ. I urge you to look to God in your struggles and look to your community and support. And always try to take those things that are lifting God up in some way or another. If you lift them up to others, they will be drawn to you. If you call to God for his help through the power of the Holy Spirit, knowing that mistakes are going to happen, but when we strive for that excellence, we can accomplish so much more today, tomorrow, and in the years to come, leaving the perfection to Jesus.